Hello, I am Clement Pang, co-founder and chief architect of Wavefront. I'm here today to talk about Wavefront histograms. Now, you might be familiar with Wavefront, and it is a SaaS service that allows you to send time series data into the cloud, allowing you to do visualizations, to do alerting, and also just to have a place to store all of your time series data. What you may not know is that Wavefront also has a way to collect histograms. And so before I actually have to uh, talk about what it means that we can collect histograms, let me actually explain the problem of what we're trying to solve here. So imagine you have requests in this particular example here. And the requests are of different sizes, uh, requests and response sizes, and it could have different latencies. In a traditional system, you may be counting the number of requests. So in this particular example, at the end of time, you would have six requests. Or you may use something like uh, Drop Wizard Metrics or even Prometheus, and it would give you bucketed latencies. What that means is that it would take these uh, time intervals, for example, in milliseconds, and it would bucket, up, it would bucket them into expen exponentially larger buckets. So you would have uh, latencies from perhaps 1 to 2 milliseconds, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16. Now that allows you to emit them still as metrics. But at Wavefront, we decided to take a different approach. And it stems from a couple of reasons why we decided to do that. One of the reasons is if you actually do bucketing, it is actually quite lossy, especially if, you don't, if the data itself doesn't fit into the bucketing scheme that you've designed. Another issue is there's actually no way to merge uh, percentiles that are from uh, a vast number of servers. For example, to compute the P95, the true P95 of a service in terms of its latency, you actually cannot just average the P95 that you collect uh, on all the servers, nor can you just take the max or min. There's just no way mathematically to actually do that correctly. And hence, we decided to devise a solution to this problem. So imagine you could actually convert this particular graph into a histogram. And so histograms typically have uh, a, a way of expressing uh, a value, in this particular case, latency, and its count. Internally, um, you have to do some optimizations because there might be you know, just hundreds of thousands, even millions of these requests, and you don't want to store each one of them. You don't want to store each of those uh, uh, data, uh, each of those data points. So what you do is you represent that in terms of centroids and counts. What that means is it is an approximation of that data. I need to probably draw some dots there. And what it means is there is a, a collection of data points that centers around a certain um, value. And you have the count for that information. What that allows you to do is to combine multiple histograms. So what I have below is another of said histogram. And what you can do is because they are the, the, their content or their counts are retained, you could actually combine this statistically and not have too much loss in terms of the position. We've chosen T-Digest as the internal algorithm for collapsing histograms. And what that allows you to do is to have accurate uh, outliers and, uh, and controlled errors in the middle of the, your uh, percentile distribution. So saying all of that doesn't really uh, explain how Wavefront comes into this picture. And what Wavefront allows you to do is to store these histograms. So each one of this is an example of a histogram. And you could store millions of these histograms into Wavefront. So the first ex uh, concept I have to explain is the, is the concept of time bucketing. So what happens uh, to histograms is that you would divide your request into bins. And these bins are bins of time. So we have support for minutes, we have support for hours, and we have support for days. So what that means is you could actually send a single histogram for that minute, or you could send a histogram and designate that for the hour. We have a way in the Wavefront proxy, and that's a piece of software that is open source, that automatically computes this bucketing for you if you don't have a way to compute that in your own code. If you happen to be using Java, you happen to be using C++ or Python, there are ways to actually compute tdigest on the, on the process itself. But if you don't happen to have that, or perhaps you're coming in for blogs, for instance, you could actually just send each one of these samples to the proxy. And the proxy will figure out which bin it should belong to and add that to that latency histogram. So again, imagine these are, uh, are latencies and counts. And each hour and each minute bucket, we would have one of these histograms. Now, the proxy processes that data. 
stores it locally because there is uh, some local aggregation that happens, and periodically flush that into Wavefront. Now in Wavefront, what that allows you to do is to actually combine these histograms using our time series language. You might have played with Wavefront a little bit, and what it allows you to do is to very quickly, using our query language, uh, question the uh, monitoring data that you have and produce insights out of it. So some of the functions that we have uh, for supporting histograms is to compute the percentiles. So you could actually ask for this particular histogram metric that you have, what is its latency at the 95th percentile for a particular minute bin, particular hour bin, or a particular day bin. What else you could do is you could actually combine these histograms together. So instead of having to manage or pre-compute all of these uh, percentiles, you could actually uh, send the raw histograms to Wavefront, and we could combine them on the fly on the server. And I explained that problem with histograms or, or computing percentiles originally with combining and computing the proper P95. And here is where Wavefront really shines. You could actually send your latency histograms for each of your services into the proxy, and you have, again, these uh, latency histograms, and you have them persisted in Wavefront. Now at runtime, Wavefront can collect all of these histograms together and produce a composite of these histograms. So in this particular example, I'm just going to just kind of approximate that results. This would be the example of combining these two histograms, sorry, into one histogram and allows you to query what is my P95 latency in terms of this combined histogram. Now, this is all done dynamically. There is actually nothing that is persisted. All of that is computed uh, in the system at runtime. And uh, using our time series language, you could actually express this in, uh, in alerts. You can convert this back into uh, time series looking graphs. So you could very easily look at um, uh, uh, a, a trend over time of how a combined uh, latency metric looks like. And uh, we are coming very soon with a visualization that allows you to look at histograms in the form of a heat map, which allows you to very quickly visualize hotspots and to look at, you know, is there a particular uh, distribution, bimodal or trimodal distribution of your latencies? And you could drill down and, 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 and explore why that is happening in your application. So as I said before, we have integrations with uh, Drop Wizard. Um, so Drop Wizard is a way for you to collect metrics from your Java applications. And there are similar implementations of that for different languages. And you could use that to gather histograms. And it would be in the form of Wavefront histograms. And you could send that to, uh, to Wavefront. Alternatively, you could send individual samples into the proxy. And you could get histograms uh, into Wavefront that way. Hope that makes sense. Uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.